Welcome to a fantastic episode of Rebellion's educational series. We're conquering Tesla Cybertruck, Elon Musk, Metaverse, and virtual reality with one of the most brilliant minds I've come across in the last two decades, Tyler Lindell, who founded Tesla's virtual reality and augmented reality division and worked with Elon. Uh, so excited to have you on today, Tyler. Thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So first question is got to be on the cyber truck. Okay. What are your feelings generally? Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, I put down a uh, deposit like as soon as you could. <laughs> it just seems like a, a crazy thing to be able to, to have and drive and just fun. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, uh, very awesome. Uh, do you see Elon selling these cyber trucks in the metaverse one day? In the metaverse, wow. Um, I don't know. He's he's got a lot of ideas, you know, that are often out there. So I would not be surprised. He's been a little critical of the metaverse, uh, you know, or I guess he's been you know, pushing his own Neuralink uh, a little bit. But uh, I know he's not the biggest fan of the metaverse. Are you a fan of the metaverse, or? Um. So, since we like since the metaverse has been like becoming more and more talked about as a quote unquote metaverse. Uh, it's starting to like have like XR types of stuff like in it where, you know, you can virtually or augmented go and, and do different things in like, you know, another world or something like that. But there's a lot of uh, things that are being added to it to call it the metaverse, like web three and um, you know, like blockchain and like, all these different things are trying to like come together and make the metaverse, which I think is like, it could end up being a good thing. Um, but at the same time, it seems like it's adding a, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff um, to something that's already like super new. And uh, it's causing more people to talk about it, which is good, but I think it can also be adding a lot of confusion. I don't think most people really understand what the metaverse is. And, you know, you're someone who obviously very much under understands virtual reality. Do you think the technology for VR is here today for, you know, a universal embracement of the metaverse? Or do you think VR is still too far off? Um, I think hardware, like, we're definitely, like, progressing in the right direction. Um, I think on the software side, like, content um, and the ability for people to, you know, see themselves using it on a regular basis still might be a little ways out for them to cross that barrier of buying the hardware that they need uh, to be able to access uh, virtual reality in like a really high, high quality way. What about the technology to overcome the headaches, which is something like 40 to 60% of human beings experience headaches with prolonged use of VR? You know, is that five, 10 years out? Are we never going to conquer that? It's hard to say. Um, I actually didn't know that figure, but a lot of things that I've heard from people that I've shared VR with is um, it's it can be a little bit disorienting um, because you like your your mind is thinking that you're in a place that you're physically really not in, mm -hmm. um, as well as if like the uh, IPD, which is interpupillary distance on uh, the headset is off, um, it can cause like a lot of challenges in the, the ability of a person to focus or find that like sweet spot in VR to be able to see things really clearly. I think that probably plays a big role in it. So do you think VR becomes a big part of education or do you see a specific industry that will embrace VR significantly? Uh, education and training, massive use cases uh, for VR um, and, and and augmented reality as well. Um, we're seeing a lot of um, training for mechanisms that would require a teacher that otherwise won't. So you can put on goggles and learn how to change the tires of a B-52, for instance. Exactly. Yep. Um, yeah. So people are training like how to weld things really well. Uh, people are learning how to uh, be able to do different types of surgeries um, really well without, you know, being put into a position where they have to do real surgery on somebody. So you could get your cyber truck and then put on the goggles and it would explain to you how to use the car in every possible way. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it, it could be broken down in a way where you could take apart the entire vehicle and put it back together. Do you think Tesla has a major advantage in driverless technology, or do you think they're just a little bit further ahead than Ford? I get such different answers on this. Um, I think where their biggest advantage comes from is uh, the training on their deep learning models. They have so many vehicles out there, so many miles, you know, uh, tracked, so many different um, situations uh, in, in their database uh, to like train their learning models on. Um, like that puts them massively ahead. Um, like being able to train dirt, deep learning models is, is can, can be excruciating if you don't have the right amount of data. So do you think that in time, not only will you buy a Cybertruck depending on its, you know, uh, how many motors it has, but also maybe the size of the computer that runs it? Is that going to be a, a price figure as well? Um, the size of the computer that runs it or? As, as in, if your computer has greater uh, processing power, would that, you think it'll figure into the, uh, the price of uh, vehicles in time? Um, I think it already does, yeah. Because um, Tesla already uh, has their own um, AI processing chips and stuff, yeah. Oh, really, interesting. Mm. So speaking of AI processing chips, uh, while, while we're on it, uh, yeah. do you think um, that we're gonna see continual technological leaps or do you think that we've kind of hit a, uh, a plateau uh, you know, with AI processing in the near th three to five year future? Um, whenever I think about AI, I think of it in uh, logarithmic terms because um, like we're, we're just kind of like in this really low state right now, which could seem like a, a plateau. Um, but it seems like as people get more into using it and a wider variety of people get into being able to build uh, models and train models, um, you get a lot, a lot larger diversity in people with experiences and, and backgrounds. And then they find new ways uh, to implement uh, an old model or find new ways uh, to put together new models. Um, and eventually, I think that will hit will hit this this really big arch up, uh, where where we're able to use AIs to train AIs. Um, so I think that we're really really down here at this very very bottom. Gotcha, gotcha. By the way, speaking of educating VR for for oneself, are there any free courses or books that you'd recommend for people who are already post college or post graduate school and want to pick up some VR knowledge? Yeah. Um, if somebody's looking to learn how to create XR content, um, like there's, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that, that will show you how to use like Unity or Unreal. Like those are the, the two baseline platforms that people are using to build out XR content. Um, there are a few new like web-based platforms where people can go and build out this content. Um, but if somebody wants to learn in more of a traditional setting and have somebody who's going to back them and also provide like excellent teachers, uh, XR Bootcamp um, is absolutely wonderful. XR Bootcamp, uh, awesome. Yeah. Where did you learn VR? Um, just learning it through watching YouTube videos. <laughs> uh, that's how I taught myself how to program too. Uh, YouTube videos, uh, some Udemy stuff. Awesome. Awesome. No, Tyler, you're uh, definitely uh, one of my heroes and, and inspiration to the, the new world. Uh, so what about Ford's F-150? Do you think that'll be as big a hit as a Cybertruck uh, in terms of, you know, I guess Cybertruck isn't even out yet, but it's right. you know, already got what, 2 million orders. And, uh, you know, the, the Ford F-150 has propelled, you know, Ford stock, you know, maybe 50% in the last few months. Uh, are you, do you have any feelings on that? Um. Ford has uh, a group of really loyal followers and the Ford F-150 has been maybe one of the best selling pickups in the country for a long time. Um, of the Ford products, like I like their pickups uh, best. What I'm concerned about is, uh, I guess like, how quickly like they can catch up <laughs> and maybe, maybe their goal isn't to catch up, right? Maybe, maybe their goal is to uh, serve a different category of people that 
are like no Tesla, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. No Tesla, but I want electric. You know, who knows what percentage yeah. of the market that is could be gigantic. For so sure. speaking of catching up, do you think that there is a competitor that Elon is worried about? I, I wouldn't say that he's worried about any competitors. Um, like I don't have any personal contact with him, so I can't say for sure, of course, but um, like they have like propelled like super, super fast. Uh, and they, they have like people that are absolutely die hard about their brand and about um, their ideals. Uh, which I don't think will shift away from Tesla ever. Um, and then there, there are some people, you know, likely on the fence between like uh, either them or Ford or Rivan or something like that. Um, but I, when I look at Ford and Rivan, I, I mean, they're probably where Tesla was like 10 years ago or more. Gotcha. So how is working with Elon? Um, I never worked directly with him, uh, I crossed paths in the hall a couple of times, <laughs> but, um, working in his, in an organization that he runs, um, is really challenging, um, is like very fast pace. Um, also you get to work around people who are absolutely like top tier, top notch people. Um, uh, that's one of the big things that, uh, Tesla or excuse me, uh, Elon provides to his organizations is he attracts uh, really, really successful, intelligent, um, motivated people. Was he in the office as much as people say he was? Um, he was in, in the office at Tesla itself, um, at least, you know, a few days a week. Uh, but he goes between Tesla, Gigafactory, um, uh, SpaceX, like, all, all of the different companies so often that um, <laughs> he's just always moving around traveling. But uh, there, there, there was one uh, point in time where, um, you know, some people were like, oh, he didn't sleep on the factory floors. He does, he doesn't, you know. But uh, I know that there was a period where um, it's probably like 2016, 2017 or so, where we had like production hell. Um, a lot of people see that as like a headline. Um, and he was sleeping on a couch inside of an office, which the office happens to be on the factory floor. So I don't know if it's like misconstrued or uh, what, but like, he's definitely like hardcore and like dedicated. Uh, he's definitely one of uh, my heroes. Totally awesome yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, speaking of awesome guys, Tyler, you're an awesome guy. And this was a, a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish you uh, very well in your future endeavors. Awesome. Thanks so much, Alex. Great Bye. seeing you. Bye.